Hello and welcome to the walkthrough of the premium cluster analysis template. Uh, this is uh, available. You can see the link below and basically it allows you to cluster some customer database information. You're allowed to enter up to 1000 respondents or variables down here and you can put uh, up to 20 different attributes across. Obviously, the more attributes you have, the more complex the clustering becomes. And if you have more than a thousand in your customer database, I would suggest you just take a random sample and use a thousand, just as you would if you do a market research survey, you typically use a sample and then base results of that. Okay, so what I've done is I've put some pretend data in. I've just put in four, eight variables. So eight attributes across there, age, income, geographic location, frequency of purchases, recency of purchase, responsiveness, loyalty, and then values and lifestyle, some sort of psychographic measure. And I've put them all in some sort of scale. The scales are a little bit different. So some are up to 10, some are, are, are narrower, but that doesn't matter because this template will standardize the data. So this is just pretend data for 200 customers. So once you've done that, you type in your variable names and put your data in, etc. What you do next is you go to cluster outputs and you have to run each of these two, three, four, five, depending on how many segments you think you want. Now, obviously, uh, uh, cluster analysis lets you uh, sort of analyze a little bit. So you typically, if you think you want five segments, you probably look at, you know, four, five, six, uh, you just wouldn't set your mind on five. You'd have a play around with it. And what I've done is these are macros behind each of these buttons. And I've, I've run them already, so hence there's some data here. But I'll just show you, uh, let's just do for, for three. What will happen is that uh, you'll see the, the cursor goes a bit, a bit funny. And then down the bottom, uh, the, this uh, software will say it, it's running. So I'll just pause it for a moment until this happens. Okay, that's just been running. And that took about a minute to run. It depends on your power of your computer. And it'll come up with a prompt to say it's finished. So you just hit OK. Now I've run all of these, but we've just run uh, three clusters again. So let's just have a look at what comes out of it. So important note, you must run it first. So occasionally, uh, if you haven't run it, some numbers may appear here, but they would be meaningless, as it says down here. So basically what we have, three clusters, three marketing segments, and it gives you the mean of each. So you can see for segment one, it's quite distinctive on, on age. Two and three are similar on age, so they must differ on something else. Um, and you just go across uh, segment two is quite different on geographic. This would be some sort of coding system like you know, city areas, inner city, suburban, country areas, etc. So you just go through and you can see how how they are different. And then what you've got to do is work out, does that make logical sense? How can I describe them? Often it's easier to convert these numbers back to some sort of labels. As I, as I said, this, this might be, uh, you know, a suburban, this might be a city, this might be country. And that sort of makes it a little bit more sensible. Okay, then it tells you how many have been allocated to each segment uh, and then our standard error. Obviously, the lower the better. Okay, so you just keep running. If you click that again, you might get slightly different variations uh, each time Excel goes through and sort of re recalibrates it and, and relooks at it. So it, it's going to be somewhat similar, but if you've got a large database, it could vary uh, to some degree. Okay, so I, I've done that. I've run all of these already. So the next thing we can have a look at is depending on uh, how many clusters we have, how many. So if we only have two, two segments, then you can see that 200 people have been split 50 to 150. And as we go across, we can see for 10 segments, there's a couple of quite small segments that that aren't a lot of value and a couple of minor segments. So that tells me that 10 segments is probably not, not great because we've got too many small segments. And then we look at you know, six, it looks pretty good. It's pretty, pretty even across the board, same with five, etc. 
and this will tell us down here our anchor responded so this is our like our persona for each segment so it picks up the you know number 43 in the list and that's the one that's that's quite representative of that particular uh segment and then underneath for all 200 it'll tell you where they've been allocated so person number one they're in segment two if there's two two segments over here when there's six segments are in put into segment six so you can see you can then map your respondents back to uh, a particular uh, cluster or segment standard error very important um, basically we should get this sort of curve and flattening if you have this sort of bumping area this is for eight segments you're probably worth running that again but as you can see uh, twos has a bit of error three has improved four keeps improving five and six are all improvements but from then on um, there's there's no improvement okay so five or six segments as we suggested before tends to be the the right combination for this data set and then down the bottom here it'll tell us error by by segment uh, what we want to avoid is something like you know segment uh, eight eights here where uh, we've got a lot of error in one particular segment or cluster so that's telling us that it's not overly reflective seven's nice and, and balanced so seven looks pretty good six has got a bit of a problem as well so um, based on what we're looking at we're looking at five six and and, and this sort of le leads us towards uh, seven as a possibility and then what we have is mapping of two variables at a time uh, we can put a name on the map uh, and then we can as you can see my map there and then we could actually name out our segments um, sorry I'm just making something up and we put a name on it if we want to name our segments um, and that will reflect all the way down as we go through if we don't do that it'll just pick up uh, uh, standard letters okay and what we do if we want to have a look at different variables we just type in let's have a look at variable three and variable seven and it'll it'll change that into recency and, and geographic that's all available for us so we, we can see how the segments differ on two attributes at a time and then finally uh, we can look at central means so this one is all in our entire market again we can change the the variables there i'll just change this one you can see that the graph changed so i'm looking at recency and age uh, there's no that's everybody that's the average and then we've got our, our our two segments and how they differ three segments four segments um so again we can they're color coded so we have a look you know segment one two three all in different colors and we can see how they differ on these particular two attributes now keep in mind i'm using eight attributes so sometimes we see some people in this appear to be identical but they're being classified as different segments that's because there's six other attributes pushing them in a different direction we also have uh, quick tips on how to in interpret but that's also available on the website and if you haven't run a macro before uh, using excel solver it's a built-in system to excel so that basically tells you how to to run it so that is the premium cluster analysis template if you have any questions just go here or you can email me